my pleasure to introduce our next presenter. He hails from Lauenburg, North Carolina, and did his undergrad or two years of um, studies here at Wingate. And um, he will be presenting to us today about getting uh, the audience motivated. So uh, help me welcome Matthew Quick. Thank you, everybody. As Jamie said, we'll be going over how to motivate the audience. So. Quickly, show of hands, please. Who here has ever struggled with an audience? Okay. You always have that one person there staring at their cell phone, they're looking at the computer screen, they're staring at the wall, they're sleeping like a fucking hunter. <laughs> <laughs> How do you re-engage them? I've had that problem mostly. I know last year I would have a friend that was always on his iPod during the class, and the professor would not say anything. <laughs> Of our objectives first. We're going to go over how to ask questions effectively. We're going to go over how to use appropriate multimedia. And lastly, we're going to go over how to perform exercises that will benefit your presentation. Before we do that, take some points from Summer's presentation, and we need to know our audience. So I know that you're all student pharmacists. I know that you that your interests are studying and networking. I know that what you want is more sleep. You want to be able to study 25 hours in a day, and you want to know how to make it through BSI. So, now that I have your attention, we can go on to the first objective, which is questions. As Dean Supernaut always says, we need to probe the audience. Now, if you're probing a patient, but the audience, and you want your answers to be different. So, with that, when you're asking questions, sprinkle them throughout. You're going to ask some in the beginning, like I did, and of course, I'll ask some towards the end. Kim. When she did her presentation, she did electronic polling. In those pollings, the questions that she asked it had um, single word responses. You don't want to confuse the audience. They're thinking, if I was to ask Kristen, so Kristen, what details go into a wedding? If I were to ask her that, it would take the attention from my speech and the main points. And we'd be thinking, well, I'm going to plan my wedding, Kristen, to walk us to a wedding. So you wouldn't do that, you know, so. <laughs> so you want more responses, and simple yes or no questions are also really, really helpful. So like I asked you earlier, who here struggles with an audience? Yes or no? Next, we have multimedia. So PowerPoints. We want your PowerPoint to be clean, professional, simple, to the point. Just a couple of tips from Jordan's slide. She said, you want to avoid preset designs. I took her advice also. Most of you probably can't tell, but I did find this really nice slide. It's blue. Audiences love blue. Little Walmart. And, uh, <laughs> so you want to clean and professional and avoid preset slides. If you have the same slides that everybody else uses, they're just going to throw it into that pile of, I've seen this before. It's old. I also found this slide. This is a really cool slide. It was the one I was actually going to use. But the fact that I know my audience, I know that you all are professional. I'm going to avoid paint splatter. I'm going to avoid rings. I'm going to avoid too much color. Most people think, well, if I'm teaching a young audience, they're going to love the color. They're going to be staring at it all day, though. They're not going to listen to you. If I was five, six, ten years old, even like 14, I would be staring at that little, let's see, that dot right there the entire time. <laughs> I would be listening. So use simple. Uh, no, do not use the preset designs and make sure it's professional to the point. Also, you want to keep pictures down to a minimum. This is actually an example of my first slide, one of my, my first presentation in communications. And we had was it was informative and we had to describe an animal. So of course I chose one that has ten legs. As you see, I have way too many pictures, way too much text for one slide. And it confused me but when I got to the slide, and it confused my audience. When I got to the end, the only question that was asked to me was, what exactly was that? So I had to backtrack. It took away from my slide. And the audience, they kind of just zoned out when I got there. They were motivated. Next, we have multimedia, is the Prezi. Wendy went over her Prezi, and she talked about how you need to avoid fancy transitions. So if your audience feels like they're on a roller coaster, they're going to get sick of your presentation. They're not going to want to listen at all, and they'll zone out also. So avoid fancy transitions. 
Also, you need to avoid crazy upside down text. Also, make sure your font is all the same, same color, same size. I made sure every single text that I had was 36. Then any small text that I had was 32. Next bit of multimedia, everybody uses YouTube. Remember that you're not showing a movie, you're giving a speech. You want to incorporate a video into your speech, you don't want to incorporate a speech into your video. So with that, I've always preferred 20 to 30 second videos. Anything over that is questionable, you do not want more than a minute. I've seen people that would play a YouTube video, it would last five minutes, they would speak for a minute, answer questions, that was their speech. <laughs> you're not doing anything. So, also, you need to know your time marker. Who here has gone into a speech and the speaker, when they get to the computer, they're sitting there fiddling with the time. They're like, uh, I think it's two, uh, two minutes, I think it's two minutes and one second. Make sure you know for sure. They can it in your head, you can write it down as one of the cues, anything. I also found this really good one. It is 30 seconds. I do not have to fiddle with the cues, it pertains to my audience. What is Wingate? A university nestled in a quiet community near Charlotte, named a best value in the South by U.S. News & World Report. Leading the way in the health sciences with pharmacy, PA studies, and nursing. What is Wingate? Big enough to offer 20 NCAA sports, small enough to attract the best and brightest in the world. What is Wingate? Wingate is you. Wingate University. Major in a great life. That would be the perfect video if anybody was going into persuading somebody to come to the school. It, it goes through the main points of why you should come to one day. Then our last objective, of course, is exercises. When Whitney did her exercises, no, Paige did her exercises, excuse me. Paige did her exercises, they were really quick, easy, simple. She came in, she had to stand up, we did two breathing exercises, we were done sat down and it, she explained it to us. They worked really, really well and they worked really well for the space that we have and the audience that we have. When doing exercises, they're great for young children. They're great for young adults, obviously. I loved it. And the size of our room was perfect. Stuff wasn't knocked over. <laughs> we weren't in shambles by the end. We weren't out of breath. But she had breathing exercises really good. I know a perfectly good example is last year. I had a friend, he did an exercise during his speech, and he was talking about the importance of money to people. So, what would you do for a dollar? He had a trash can and he had a tennis ball. And throughout the class, you had to throw the tennis ball into that trash can while he was moving it around. So, of course, stuff was knocked over. It lasted a good four minutes out of the five minute speech. The professor was kind of upset because he really didn't give a speech, he gave an exercise. That kind of goes back, you want to incorporate video into your speech, you want to incorporate exercise into your speech, not the other way around. So, that, that kind of goes back into you want to have enough space and the right audience. So, to conclude, I've gone over how to ask questions. You want to be simple yes or no responses, or one word responses. You want to have appropriate multimedia, so you do not use preset slide designs. If you're using a YouTube video, prefer between 20 to 30 minutes. Over a minute is kind of risky. And then with performing exercises, make sure they're quick, simple, you have enough space, you're with the right age group. That's it. Any questions? Anybody? Um, pointers I was given after giving that speech was instead of using, especially for those pictures, do one picture per slide and then have a few cues on the side of what you would do, the details of that picture. So, of course, I said I had ten legs for that one animal. I may have one slide just for the legs and explain each thing that the legs were used for. She would be surprised. And I'll 
that's exactly what he told me. Don't put all the slides. Don't put all the pictures on one slide. Just spread it out. So exactly what animal was the uh, turtle? Okay. So, I know as far also with that speech. Um, Another way to motivate is to bring in a, an object or a visual aid. So I actually brought a hermit crab to the class. First speech, I was nervous, didn't really think about, oh, maybe he can get out of the Tupperware. I made it into my speech, he's like right there with pages, and he's crawling out. So the whole class is like this, They're freaking out, They're like, oh my god, it's going to jump at me or something like that. So it took away from it. Besides the confusing slides and the mini pictures, I had to step away and put him back in the Tupperware, and they pinch, so I was very careful and very slow. So what would you do, like, um, if that, like, that kind of goes back to our last something one, yeah, something's going wrong, but how are you going to bring the audience back after that? I kind of made them laugh. <laughs> Once I fixed it, I was still kind of nervous, because like I said, it was my first speech, so I fixed it, made sure the Tupperware was on really, really tight, he was, he was good and secure, and um, <laughs> when I got into the sand, I was like, so, that was fun. The whole class laughed and I said, well, let's continue. I didn't dwell on it too long because I didn't want to. That wasn't the whole point of the speech. Just why I was kind of getting out of the top of my I just kind of had, I had to close it up really fast to make them laugh. So were you passing the, the top of the crab and around? So. I just had it sitting. First had it sitting up on the podium and then I said, well, I'll sit down at the bottom and think it all okay. It won't distract me either. So the gist I'm getting from your presentation is that you need a balance of yes. visual aids. And as I was going through, like as far as balance of everything, as I was going through my topics I was going to talk about, I was kind of like, well, I don't want to be summarizing everyone else's speeches. But I had to incorporate them also. So in order to motivate your audience, you need to know your audience, you need to know what they want. In doing that, you're going to come up with exercises or visual aids or you know how to do slide design so they don't get bored. What do you think is the best way to motivate your audience? Past experience. I would say exercises. Exercises and real questions. I've always, every speech that I've always done, I'll ask at least two to three questions throughout the speech. It kind of keeps them, it makes it where they have to recall the points towards the end. So they're not just like, oh, he's giving a speech on motivation fall asleep, wake up at the end and just listen to his conclusion. You're keeping them engaged. And they're thinking in their head, well, what is motivation? What what would I do for that slide? What would I do for this video? What have I done in the past? And I've never actually used a YouTube video, so I had to look at a little bit of research to go from past experiences of what I've seen other people do. Because I've seen five minute YouTube videos on my speeches and it's just, it's a mess. they were broken into after, groups. Yeah. Depending on what my topic would be, like I'm assuming I would have them break into groups for a certain reason, I would probably call them back together and say, okay, just like any other professor or teacher would do, I'd say, so what did you guys come up with? What did you guys come up with? And then I would, of course, doing my research, find a way to incorporate those answers into my response back to them. So one class said yes, one class said no. I'll say, well, research shows, you got any idea. That's the place you can really lose stuff. Yeah. And I would imagine that would, of course, if it was a, which I know not every speech has a time limit, but yeah, for, those that, <laughs> yeah, for those that would, you got to make sure they know exactly how long. Make sure you can not control the crowd, but manage the crowd, I guess. Matt, what would you recommend the best way to uh, to get your audience attention? Let's say you're speaking to high school students. Okay. All right. You come in there and it's like chaos. Like they talking and they joke and throw papers at each other. You know, it's just totally not paying attention to you. How would you deal with that? Okay, that's perfect actually. Um, past experience. 
we've all been to high school I assume. So, of course, when they play a video in high school, everybody gets quiet. So, when you're doing your speech, you can start off, hi, I'm teaching you about motivation, just go over your objectives, and then maybe start off with, like I said, I'll start off with a short video first, because they're all going to get quiet, and they're all going to look at the video, and then when you're done with the video, they're going to look at you for a direction. They're going to know what's next. That'll calm them down. If you go with pictures, you still may have people looking out the window or looking at the ceiling. YouTube video, everybody's going to look at the YouTube video. And then when it's done, they're going to look for you for guidance. And a lot of this was just past experience for me. I was going through um, going through a lot of my old stuff on the flash drive, and I was like, I kind of want to use one of my slides that would, for an example, I found that one. I was like, oh, that's perfect. Because I, I remember that day, I remember him giving me the advice and using just one picture per slide. And What did he do really well? <laughs> well, I mean, I'll start off. I, I thought it was really, um, you seem really comfortable and knowledgeable about your material, so mm -hmm. you're able to, to help get your points across pretty easily. Like it was something kind of small, but like when you brought up Jordan's speech, you walked to the other side of the room yeah. and spoke to her. Like that was really good. Yes, I want to bring on the fact that you did really great, you know, speaking at work. I was kind of nervous at first because I was just planning on just standing out here, but when I'm standing, I start to shake. I'm like, uh, I don't want to just sit up here and shake the whole time. So kind of walk around and did a really good job walking around. So I said, oh, I'll take Winners. <laughs> um, I know, I already knew I wanted to incorporate everybody else's speech and their names, but that way it would kind of recall everything back to the audience. And like when I asked Kristen to give her examples on how would you plan a wedding, <laughs> she was like, well, what? But like I said, it got her into the speech and she wasn't zoning out, obviously. And, um, also, walking around, I was kind of trying to remember who was coming up next in my speech that I would know where to walk. There were a couple points, like I said, when I was over here, I would think, oh, this person's next. I would walk over here, but I didn't want to pace too much. It's very yeah, Of course, it brings the attention. As far as me walking over here, like I say it was for Jordan or Paige or Whitney, it also kind of brings the attention over to them. So, I'm not, it's not separate. I like the specific examples of the stories that you gave. That was really interactive. I had, um, when I had finished, like, finished my speech and what I had down, what I was going to say, and I went over it first, it was short. And I said, well, I need to come up with some better examples. And I thought, well, what better do the past examples? I like that. The stories are memorable. Because we've all heard what one idea one picture on the side, but now oh, we never really crap. Yeah, that was, was yes. that was a mess. And then like I said with the, um, my friend that did his exercise, mm -hmm. it would have been a really great exercise if he would have just said, put the trash can down here, make sure it doesn't fall over. Could you guys really just fall into the trash can? Instead, he was literally running around the room, moving the trash can around, and we were literally we all had tennis balls, so it was not one tennis ball. And we were all throwing them at once. The press was just in the back and he's kind of staring down like really. Because it was a mess afterwards. It, it took, I want to say that speech had to be maybe seven minutes. His was about 13. And then the cleanup? Yeah, and then the cleanup, yes, exactly. <laughs> and of course, people had computers and everything else on there, so it was a mess. Um, I would say you were a bit quiet at times. 
singling out certain people, but I found myself looking at that in my cues a lot. So. I like talking to you move back and forth, but at times, like, when you would go to that side, then you would back up, which would kind of block you from our side. I think you did it on this side as well. So keep that here instead of there. transition kind of flows into what you're transitioning right. to. Right. I thought it was great that you made it. Gotcha. Oh, that was a new thing for me, so uh, I love the tips. Dr. Hunter, what would you say as far as walking back and forth and making sure you don't block people or hide yourself at the podium? You have to be very aware of your space. And kind of it helps. Now, you said you just decided to do it when you got it. It helps the reverse. If you think about when you're going to move. At one point, you, you walk turned away and you're walking to the other side so you're talking that way. Yeah. You know, and it was a little hard to hear. Stand behind the podium because I had already given everybody my opinion on what I think they should get away yeah. from the podium, and I knew I didn't want to just stand yeah. and do the emotion because no one may have to just start shaking. So I didn't seem nervous that. I'm happy with that. <laughs> That's really good. This has been the same for every single speech that I've done. Yeah. I would want to have more time to go over it. I had I had all my slides done for the most part, and I had an idea of what I was going to say, but I didn't have it all on paper at first. I really started getting all my thoughts together last week. <laughs> this week can actually work the whole weekend, so I had a couple hours here and there to actually go over it. So I always kind of want more time to... That would help me with the eye contact, so I would be looking at my, at my cues constantly and also re rehearsing what I'm looking for. When you get in those uh, parliamentary style rooms, you don't have the uh, elevator. Yeah, the I'll just be staring at a wall. <laughs> yeah, well, you'll be taking this as well. Yeah, no help at all. Yes. So, how would you engage with the people? See, I'm sitting there like. I would definitely be asking questions. And it probably wouldn't be where I would ask a question, so, Henderson, what do you think of this? I would probably say front row, second person. I would try to engage certain people that way. They're really thinking about it. They're not, because I know at Hendersonville, you see some people, they're just, their heads down the entire class. They're looking at their notes, I hope, but they're staring down the entire time. And when they ask a question, they don't really move. So... I would probably try to engage certain people in that situation. If I knew their names, that would be awesome. I would say, so, Katie, what did you think? How do you feel with the, when the uh, speaker calls your name? I know I always hate it in class when they're like, walk around and get some of the awkward pause and everybody just looks down. Don't call me, don't call me. Turn my name tag away from them. <laughs> but it helps in the long run. Because I find the people that answer the most answer the, the most questions, they have a better handle on class because they're engaged throughout the class. So. Yeah. You can't learn anything if you're not engaged. Yeah. 
and I have days just staring down at the laptop, and you don't really learn anything. Seriously.